we'll go to shloka number 8 so shloka number 8 and 9 we need to read together i, I will read it and i'll give explanation because we need to see some explanation then we'll go to the shloka naiva kinchit karomi ti yukto manye tatva vit pashyan shrinvan sprishan jighran ashnan gachchan swapanshwasan pralapan visrjan grinnan unmishan nimishan api indriyani indriyartheshu vartanta iti dharayan so here we have to split certain things naiva kinchit karomi ti yukto manyeta tatva vit that is straight forward pashyan shrinvan sprishan jighran where we will stop ashnan gachchan swapanshwasan pralapan visrjan grinnan unmishan nimishan api indriyani indriyartheshu vartanta iti dharaya here what he is saying is he talked about karma yoga again he is going to jump he is going to go to jnana and he talks about the person jnana karma sanyasa if you remember we saw in chapter 4 right the shloka number 18 we saw in that what did we see person who has separated his atma from the sanatma he knows that even though if you think the atma is acting you will see the inaction because you have separated the sanatma and anatma and you know that the anatma alone is acting and the sanatma does not act that was the substance of that shloka karmanya karma yah pashyet akarmani cha karma yah s buddhiman manushyeshu sayukta kritsna karma krit that was a shloka number 18 so where said that through knowledge what he did was he separated these two and he didn't attribute any action to the atma but to the anatma he knows that it was always the it always will keep acting so he said that okay even if it is resting now it will act after some time like that he knows so this knowledge was there this was jnana karma sanyasa same thing he is talking here he is talking about the jnani after karma yoga he will go to the jnani again he will go later to karma yoga so he is going to keep switching so this is about jnana this is about jnana karma sanyasa you can take it either way so the person who is a jnani he has given some examples of some daily activities that we will see what it is even though he is doing all the activities he does not do anything he thinks i i don't do anything so that is the basic uh, substance of this the context of the shloka is he is giving the qualification for the sanyasi like for everything there are certain qualifications right if you have to do a job there are qualifications you must have this engineering degree like that you have qualification like that to become a sanyasi also you have qualifications so there are two qualifications to become a sanyasi that we already know two qualifications are one is you must have attained jnana if you have attained jnana you can take sanyasa immediately or you must have intense vairagya or the intense detachment from this world but the word is intense so these are the two qualifications to get to sanyasa and here he is talking about the one who has got the jnana went to sanyasa that is the context basically of the shloka and he says that this person who is a jnani how does he act so we will see the shloka and see if there is uh, some more explanation so naiva kinchit karomi iti naiva kinchit na eva kinchit certainly do not do anything karomi i do iti what the jnani thinks certainly i do not do anything yukta ha manyeta tatva vit yukta ha this person who is the jnani manyeta tatva vit thinks who thinks the one who has known the truth tatva vit yukta ha means he is engaged in this knowledge he is steadfast in this knowledge of the truth so pashyan pashyan means he is seeing shrinvan means he is hearing sprishan means he is touching and jigran means he is smelling so pashyan means he is seeing shrinvan means he is hearing sprishan means he is touching and jigran means he is smelling so four words already then he goes on then ashnan 
Sashnan means he is eating, and Gachan means he is moving, and Swapan means he is sleeping, and Swashan means he is breathing. So again, four words. What did we see? Ashnan is eating, Gachan moving, Swapan sleeping, Swasan breathing. So again, four more words. Eight words we have seen. Then again he continues. Pralapan. Pralapan means he is talking. And then Visrijan. Visrijan means he is excreting. Grinnan. He is accepting. He is taking with his hand. Unmishan. Unmishan means he is opening his eyes. Nimishan means he is closing his eyes. Api. So what words we have seen? Pralapan. Talking. Visrijan. Excreting. Grinnan. Accepting. Unmishan. Opening his eyes. Nimishan, closing his eyes, Api also. Indriyani, Indriyateshu. So, Indriyani, the Indriyas are acting on the sense objects. Vartanta iti dharayan. They are moving with the sense objects. That is what he is dharayan. He is convinced. What is the general translation? Those who are steadfast in the truth always think, I do not do anything or I am not the doer. Even while engaged in seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, moving, sleeping, breathing, speaking, excreting and grasping and opening or closing his eyes. With the light of the divine knowledge, they see that it is only the material senses that are moving about the objects. Chapter 2 in Asthita Pragnya Lakshana also, we saw uh, shloka number 68. Tasma Desya Mahabaho Nikridhitani Sarvashaha Indriyani Indiyarte Bhyaha Tasya Pragnya Pratishtita. So the one who has withdrawn from the senses, from the sense objects. So the senses and the sense objects are doing their own stuff. Like that he thought and he withdrew that person that was a jnani. And then uh, chapter 2, shloka number 58. Yada samharate chayam purmonga niva sarvashaha. Indriyani Indriyarte Bhyaha Tasya Pragnya Pratishtita. That was sloka number 58 where we said that like uh, how the tortoise will uh, withdraw itself when it sees danger. Like that the person withdraws the senses from the sense objects that was related to the senses. But here what does this person think? Okay, there are some sense objects and my senses are moving with the sense objects. He will not personally be involved with it because he knows that he the Atman is separate from the senses and the sense objects. So this is the meaning of the shloka. So that he has taken some common examples. So here he says that naiva kinchit karomiti yukto manyata tattvavita. So naiva kinchit karomiti. Here he says that I do not do anything. And in the previous shloka, he said that kurvan napina lipyate. Even when he is doing, he is not engaged. So a little bit of difference is there between the two. That karma yogi, even though he is doing, he is not attached, they are saying. Here, the jnani thinks that I don't do anything at all. Like that he thinks. So there is also one story. Uh, Vyasa was uh, one time he was uh, near uh, the river Yamuna and some milkmaids wanted to cross the river. The river was like full uh, momentum. So they told Vyasa, you have so much powers. We want to cross and go. We want to sell our milk and everything. Can you help us? So Vyasa said, okay, but only if you uh, give me your, uh, like give me the curd and little bit butter and all. I am hungry. I have to eat. And after that, I will do your job. They part with their curd and everything. Vyasa becomes full. Then he tells uh, Yamuna, I, if I have not eaten anything and I have fasted, please the Yamuna should part. Like that he says. And the Yamuna parts. It would just gives way. So what is this the contradictory thing? He ate full stomach, he is there. But he is saying that, oh, if I have not eaten anything, that means Yamuna should part and Yamuna parted. So what is the essence of this is that Vyasa is a jnani. He did not think that he ate it. He thinks that sense organs ate it and he, that is what happened. He did not attach himself with his stomach or with the senses or the sense objects. So this is a story. It is not for an Agnani to think that I have not eaten anything, not thinking. 
he has realized that he is not the same as a sense object. So there is a story which indicates that, you know, for a jnani, it is very different. For an agnani, it is different. If we go and say, Yamuna will not move, it will not part. But because he was a jnani, th that words were true, true for him. So that was a story uh, in relation to this uh, shloka. Now, shloka number 10. Again, Krishna is going to come to Karma Yoga. And he is going to give three descriptive shlokas about Karma Yoga. 10, 11 and 12 are going to be on Karma Yoga. Brahmanyadhaya karmani Sangam tyaktva karotiyah Lipyate na sapape na Padma patra vibhambhasa When we do Karma Yoga, what happens? That is what he is saying here. Brahmanya daya karmani. Brahman here meaning Saguna Brahman, which means God, Ishara. So, Adhaya, he dedicates everything to God. So, when you do Karma Yoga, you go do with Arpana Buddhi, right? You will dedicate all your actions to God. So, like that, to God, he is dedicating Karmani. All the actions he is dedicating. Sangam Tyaktva Karoti Yaha. So, he does not have the attachment. Attachment to what? Attachment to the fruits of the actions and attachment to the rights. Like what right will come and the mother and the father, what rights do I have? Like that he does not have any attachment. And to the fruits, whatever I am doing today, whatever the fruits are, he does not have any attachment. And first he dedicates everything to God because whatever work has come for him for that day, he said, okay, this is your gift. Like that he has dedicated his actions that we saw in chapter 2. Brahmanya daya karmani sangam tektva karotiya hai. So what happens to this person? Lipyate nasapape na. Lipyate meaning it is not affected. Lipyate na saha. This person pape na by sin. He is not affected by sin. Padma patra iva ambasa. Padma patra like the lotus leaf iva ambasa like ambasa. He is talking about how the water will be on a lotus leaf. Does it stick? The water does not stick to the lotus leaf. Like that, whatever he is doing, it is not sticking to him. Like the fruits of action are not sticking to him. Why? Because of his attitude. The only difference is the attitude. This person also did all the things. He raised the children. He went to office. He cooked. The other neighbor also did everything. But the karma yogi, even though he did everything, he was not attached. He was just doing it thinking that this is a gift from God and I have to execute it. Like that he was doing these things. So three results are there for uh, karma. We say for jnani what happens is karma has no effect because he is above, he has separated himself, uh, the atma from all these actions and all the uh, anatma part. So the karma does not have effect. When karma yogi does the karma, what he gets is purity. Purity of mind is the most important thing. That is the basis of spirituality. Without understanding what is the meaning of spirituality, we do some practices. Actually, we have to focus on the purity of the mind and the peace of the mind. When you do not do any harm to others, when you can sleep peacefully at night or your mind is not disturbed, that is what we want to aim at. We don't want to aim at red one rituals but you have ego, you have mental disturbances, you want to compete, all that kind is against spirituality. So purity of mind is what we have to focus on. How I can get the purity of mind? How my mind can be balanced? How my mind can be peaceful? It only comes through service and it comes through attaching yourself with God. If we are doing any selfish act, we cannot get purity. Because when you do things for others, even at the house or anywhere, that is when you get the purity of mind. For Kamya Karma, when you are doing like, suppose you do as Kamya Karma, you do not dedicate your actions. Then what happens? You are doing good things. Suppose you are doing charity, but you don't say, God, you take this fruits like that. You don't say, then what will happen is you will get Punya. That will get credited to your bank account. But if you don't want punya, we have to say that, God, I have just been an instrument. Today you gave me the money, you gave me the strength or you gave me whatever to do this to this other person. Like that, if you say, then that will not be credited to our account. 
So these are the three results of uh, karma for three different people. For a jnani, for a karma yogi and for a person who is doing the kamya karma, which means desirous of the results, he is doing that karma. So this was shloka number 10. Shloka number 11 is continuing with the karma yoga topic. Kaye namanasa buddhya kevalairindri airapi yogina karma kurvanti sangantyaktvatma shuddhaye so here he says, this person, Kāyena manasa buddhya. Three words are given. Kāyena, he is doing things with his body. Manasa, he is doing things with his mind. And buddhya, he is doing things with his intellect. Everything is being used. And kevalehi, kevalehi is only. So this only must be added to all the three words. Only with the body, only with the mind, and only with the intellect. Like that must be interpreted api yoginaha so yoginaha is he is talking about the karma yogi karma kurvanti they will perform the action sangam tyaktva must shuddhaye sangam means the attachment tyaktva he is given up the attachment atma shuddhaye he is just doing for what for purification of his mind that is why he is doing this general translation is the yogis, while giving up the attachment, perform actions with their body, senses, mind and intellect only for the purpose of self-purification. So, there are three parts for action. First of all, sankalpam is there is a thought that will come. There is a thought. And then the uh, intellect will decide, okay, what I should do, whether I should do this or I should not do. Suppose the alarm rings in the morning, then first one thought will come. Then the intellect will decide, oh, I am very tired today, oh, no need to get up. Like that, the intellect will decide and then the act happens. Either you sleep or you wake up. So that's what happens. But actually, even before the thought happens, what happens is there are two more things that is happening. That is a raga dvesha start to act, the like and the dislike. I like to get up, I don't like to get up. Like that, you already have a predetermined raga or dvesha. So that, it's, that starts to act on this thought itself. So we don't know the stages of our thought. When we observe it, we may catch it. But there is a like or dislike already coming into this input. And there is also the mamakaram and the ahankaram. The i-ness um, and mindness is also acting at that point, even before the thought happens. What happens is this karma yogi, before the sankalpam is being instigated by the raga and dvesha and the hankara. So why people are talking about equanimity, the arpana buddhi, prasada buddhi, it is like a strategy. Because they know that, oh, this is all going to act on the thought. Raga dvesha is going to act on the thought. Whatever you say, all your samskaras, your vasanas, your previous birth, all that is going to come. Plus, you have acquired so many inputs in this janma. All that is stored there. What they are saying, equanimity, that word is used so that this raga and dvesha cannot act on the thought. And then that cannot control the action. So that is why they talk about equanimity. And why they talk about the arpana buddhi, prasada buddhi? Because this mamakaram and ahankaram will come to play. It is already there. It is a quality of everybody. That has to be removed. So that is why they say, okay, you have to do it thinking that it is a prasada of God. Then we don't attach ourselves. We think ourselves as instruments. So these are strategies that we must understand to remove this thought process. That is to control this thought process and get to a good result. So that is what the karma yogi does. And because he keeps practicing it again and again and again, then disturbing thoughts don't come into his mind. And then he gets the peace and the purity of mind. The what happens is our mind self is entrapped with all these things going around. Actually, it is a very powerful weapon. Like how uh, they say there is a silkworm and it will be entangled in its own, uh, like it will be spinning, the world will die inside. Like that, our mind will, uh, will entrap us because it will just spinning inside its own thoughts and projections and everything. 
So in order to come out of this is why we have to practice Karma Yoga so that you will use the mind as a tool that we were going to see chapter 6 and all we are going to see. So Karma Yoga definition here in this shloka how it is given. It is acting without Raga and Dvesha. It is acting without Mamakaram and Ahankaram, mainly Mamakaram and acting without the attachment to results. So shloka number, Lanka number 12, again continuation of Karma Yoga topic. Yukta karma phalam tyaktva shanti mapnoti naishtiki ayukta kama karena phale sakto ni badhyate. So here he says, first line is talking about the person. If you follow karma yoga, what is the benefit? Second line, it is consequence of not doing karma yoga. So two lines are talking about two different things. So he says, Yukta karma palam tyaktva. Yukta, the one who is uh, doing karma yoga, karma palam tyaktva. Karma palam, he has given up the tyaktva. He has given up the results of the karma pala. Shanti apnoti naishtiki. So shanti means peace. He gets apnoti. He attains naishtiki. He attains everlasting peace. Shanti apnoti naishtiki. Ayuktaha kama karena, ayuktaha, the one who is not doing the karma yoga, kama karena, impelled by desires, this kama, impelled by all that, phale saktaha nibadhyate, phale, in the result, saktaha, he will be attached to the results, whenever he is doing anything, even to smile at somebody, he will think, what will be the result, like that he will be attached to the result in every action he is doing, Nibadhyate, then he becomes entangled. So it is talking about two different things. One who is not doing the karma yoga and the one who is doing the karma yoga. General translation is offering the results of all the activities to God. The karma yogi at attains everlasting peace. Whereas those being impelled by their desires with a selfish motive become entangled because they are attached to the fruits of their actions. So here, uh, this Naishtiki can be taken in two ways. That is, you get everlasting peace. One from Moksha, like that you can take. Like you do Karma Yoga, you get Jnana, you get everlasting peace. Or you can also take it as you get peace from Karma Yoga itself. Like how you can say this is, okay, if you are very, very hungry, you're going in search of food. So when you're going in search of food, Suddenly you find that, okay, there is a hotel and it is uh, serving idli sambar. Then that immediately you get the sense of satisfaction. Even though you have not eaten it, you get that satisfaction, right? That is what is karma yoga. Then you progress and you get this everlasting peace. Adi Shankaracharya takes the moksha only in this, that is the everlasting peace of the moksha, where he says that, Okay, you from karma yoga, you will go to obtain the jnana. From the jnana, you will practice the jnana and then you will go to moksha and from there you will get the peace. 